Hello, this is Mike Ryan with Right With God Ministries, and the name of today's message is, Does God Love the Backslider? Yes. Amen. Let's open up in prayer. Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for the open heart listening that's ready to receive your truth right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. God loves the backslider. And if you're listening, then you've realized that that's you. You've backslidden at some point in your faith. And really, everybody knows what it's like to feel like they're not giving the Lord what they want to give him, how they, they're they not serving him the way they feel like they want to serve him, or whatever it may be for you. Um, maybe that you feel like you failed God or that you've let God down. And I just want to encourage you with the word of God about your father's heart. You know, when you've believed on Jesus Christ, that was once and for all forgiveness that God offered you. He's not angry at you. Jesus drank all the cup of God's anger for you. He drank it in your behalf. Jesus pleads the Father in every single way. And God decided to use him as a sacrifice so that he can represent you and you can now have his righteousness. So God's never going to take that away from you. Let's just go into some scriptures to show that even in your rebellion, even in your struggle, even the times that you've messed up, God is still with you and loves you. Daniel chapter nine, verse nine, to the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness. Hallelujah. Though we have rebelled against him, God is not like people not like your your husband or he's not like your wife or your children or that family member or your employer or or those that work for you god is so forgiving he's super abundant and mercy he's not gonna hold things against you and even when you're at your worst his mercy and forgiveness are there for you you need to know that hosea chapter 14 verse 4 is the second verse god says i will heal their backsliding I will love them freely for my anger has turned away from him. And if you're in Jesus Christ, his anger has turned away from you because he put that anger towards Jesus on the cross 2000 years ago. All of the anger of God was poured out on Jesus Christ. All of the wrath was poured out on him. And God says, now I'm going to love you freely. I'm going to love you freely. I'm going to love you permanently. I see what you've done. I see what you're going through and you're my child and I'll heal you. You know, you maybe want to run away from God. Maybe you want to think that God doesn't have anything to do with you, but no, he's, he's has his arms open and he wants you to come to him to be healed. It's healing is what you need. And he's ready to give that to you because he'll love you freely. Let's go to our third verse, Jeremiah chapter three, verse 14. Return, O backsliding children. Ah, if you believe in Jesus, you are a child of God. Return, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married to you. Amen. I am married to you. Oh man, God is so good. He has married us. You know, when you believe in Jesus, you become part of the church. And the church is the bride of Christ. And Jesus is, is you know, the, the whole family dynamic is a picture of the gospel. Christ is married to you. And God is not going to leave you or forsake you. He has a covenant with you. And there's actually another verse we're going to cover that's going to show that more. Let's go to our fourth verse. This is more like a couple of verses in John chapter 8 verses 10 through 12. This is Jesus's encounter with Mary Magdalene and how all the people were there ready to accuse her. All the people were there ready to throw stones at her. And he says, anyone who's without sin cast the first stone, right? So they all says they leave from the oldest to the youngest, all the religious leaders. And verse eight of verse 10 of John chapter eight, it says, when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? And she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. I don't condemn you. That's how, that's how God is looking. And he's saying, look, I'm not 
I'm not condemning you here. Well, but wait a minute. He said, go sin no more. Isn't that showing there right there that God is demanding perfection from me? That God is demanding that I never sin again? No, 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 no. When you are a believer, you are in Christ. And in Christ, there is no sin. When you are a believer, you're in Christ. And in Christ, there is no sin. Christ came to make an end of sin, to take away sin, it says in 1 John chapter 3. And Hebrews it talks about that he has made an end of sin once and for all for those who believe. So when you're in Christ, yes, your flesh may sin, but there is no sin in you. There is no condemnation in those who walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. But that means is that when you're connected to God to the spirit, you're walking by faith. Well, you realize that even in your imperfections, God is not looking at you as though you're a sinner any longer. But when you're walking into the flesh and you're just focusing on what your flesh is doing wrong and how bad your flesh is, well, now you're, you're condemning yourself when you ought not to be. You ought to be looking to your father, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith looking to them because they'll heal you and they'll help you so that when he says that to go sin no more really that's a that's a message for you to continue to look to him continue to to claim your right standing with god continue to claim your eternal forgiveness of sin and i can prove that because the very next verse jesus it says then jesus spoke to them again saying i am the light of the world he or she who follows me will not walk in darkness but have the light of life Anyone who follows Jesus, you're not in darkness. If you're putting your trust in Jesus. It doesn't matter what the thoughts that you may come that may come to you, the things you may stumble in. If you if you believe on Jesus Christ, you are in the light. Amen. Here's the last verse I want to give you. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. It says, If we are faithless, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. Why? He cannot deny himself. And that's how God operates, is that he's made a covenant with you. He's put the spirit of Christ inside of you. And even though you may not be making the choices right now, that you that the right choices, God cannot deny himself because he's living in you. When Paul was talking to the Corinthians and one of them was sleeping with a prostitute, he says, don't you know you're joining the spirit of God to a prostitute? Because God won't leave you just because you are making a bad choice. That's why he says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God because he's not going to leave you, but he'll be grieved. He'll, he'll feel saddened because he, guess what? He wants you to operate and live according to that righteousness that you have. So he loves you. Okay. Stop thinking he's mad at you. He loves the backslider. He's ready to heal the backslider. He's married to the backslider. He doesn't have any condemnation for the backslider. And he, excuse me, he will remain faithful. Amen. Even when you struggle and remain faithless. God bless you.